We're, we're trying to understand um, what the real ramifications are of COVID on countries like South Africa. Just how brutally damaged is the economy in your assessment? Good morning, as we start 2021. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, you know, we entered the COVID environment with an economy that was already growing far too slowly for the needs of the country as a result of poor economic choices of, over many years and lack of fiscal discipline. So the shock of COVID was an accelerator on the top of an already deteriorating economic and fiscal situation. So our current view as Nedbank is that the, the peak shock to the economy was in the second quarter of this year. There's been some recovery since then, but we would be forecasting that the economy would shrink somewhere between 7 and 8% in 2020, and then grow around 3% off that low base in 2021, which is in fact very much in line with the recent IMF forecast at 28 the outlook has been very uncertain. Is the procurement of vaccines creating more certainty for you? How, at the head of a bank, how does that impact your management of capital? Yeah, so certainly, you know, front of mind for everybody has been the procurement of vaccines. And uh, listening in on a, on a conversation at the WEF yesterday, I, I heard a, a statement that I think is absolutely true everywhere in the world, is that vaccination is the best economic policy for any government anywhere in the world right now. Uh, last night, there was a two-hour webinar hosted by the Minister of Health in South Africa, and I think that provided a lot more assurance around the extraordinary amount of work that actually has gone in to the procurement and distribution of vaccines, with the country aiming to achieve herd immunity or just over 60% of the population vaccinated by the end of 2021. Mike, we are in the midst of a, a global war on health. All governments are going to have to change and jettison certain sacred cows, so to speak. Do you think that this is a moment for Ramaphosa and Tito Wembuene and the team there to really enact reform that society will have to accept post-COVID? I think they simply have no choice. The, the maths of the current trajectory on the fiscal deficit without structural reform just simply doesn't work. So the government really has no choice but to use this crisis as the moment to stop talking about fiscal reform. We've done a great job. We've done a great job of talking about, sorry, structural reform for many years, but we actually haven't delivered on it. So this has to be the year where we mm. see real progress, in particular, on things like infrastructure in general, but energy in particular, which has been a binding constraint on the economy and the release of spectrum. I think those will be the two litmus tests this year. What would you give the grade thus far, um, Mr. Brown, to the South African government handling of the second virus as well as the distribution of vaccines? Well, I think the, the government has done a really good job on the virus in general. There are always things that could have been done better, but we locked down early with a very hard lockdown which with the benefit of hindsight was absolutely the right thing to do. We had some missteps when we moved from level five to level four in around about June of, of this year, where we tried to regulate the economy almost product by product, and then rectified that when we moved to level three. So I think in, in really difficult circumstances, the government has done a good job. There have been some question marks around things like tobacco and, and liquor, where I think we could have lifted earlier. Uh, but in terms of, of the vaccines, it is still relatively early days on the rollout. Um, but, you know, we've, we've had lots of calls with government as business over both December and January. And there's very, very strong mobilization around the necessity for vaccine purchases and, and rollouts. And they're going to be ongoing engagements uh, from business around this. So we can play our part in ensuring that we vaccinate enough people that we can get back to a more normal economy. Mike, Amory and I were, were, were looking around at various things that, it, that you as a CEO are going to understand and tell to the market. We're looking at the RAND. Amory found this chart. 
the Rams' sh longest winning streak in 18 years, Mike. So there was this sort of all-in on EM trade around the world. It's the big consensus, isn't it? So your currency has been absolutely on, on, on a tour. Can you translate that currency move into the flow of money into South Africa? What can you tell Amory and I and the viewers this morning about flow to South Africa? Is it real uh, or is it hot money? Well, you know, the RAND, uh, as most of your viewers will know, is one of the most liquid emerging market currencies. So generally what you see over time is when there's either emerging market risk on or emerging market risk off, the RAND overreacts in either direction. So while there's been significant strengthening of the RAND into the back end of last year, the RAND was one of the weakest emerging market currencies in the first half or quarter of, of last year. And, and certainly, as we've seen more risk on globally and the search for yield, we have largely as a consequence of our large fiscal deficit, a very steep yield curve. So that, that yield is attractive mm -hmm. to investors. But from our point of view, the flow of money into South Africa is still largely in the form of financial assets, i.e. bonds and stocks. And, and not long-term infrastructural investment, which is what we desperately okay. need.